Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a short story because it is Short Story Tuesday. Uh, so I wanted to focus on one that is about magic and mysterious purses. I am referring to The Fairy Handbag by Kelly Link, which was published in 2004. For those who don't know, Kelly Link is a uh, predominantly a short story writer. Uh, this is the first short story that I'm uh, that I've encountered from her. But it, what's funny is I, w I went to the library um, pretty recently, and right after I had read this short story, I found another book by Kelly Link uh, that uh, from her um, it, uh, her short story collection "Get in Trouble," which I thought was funny because. Um, like right after I had read her, I started seeing her more and more. And what's interesting is she writes about uh, fantasy and sci science fiction type stuff. Uh, she's won uh, a number of awards, including a Hugo Award. And I think she also uh, has a MacArthur Genius Grant, which is pretty impressive. Although the MacArthur Genius Grant, in order to get it, you have to be nominated by someone uh, first. So it's, it's again, it's, it's not like maybe they're just giving out awards to smart people it's it's more along the lines there um it's it, it's who you know over anything else uh but um she still has all of those accolades which is pretty good for her um and she has taught here and there as well um but i don't know much else about kelly link uh beyond what i've found on her website and in my my various searches uh but i would be interested in reading more of her uh, her work, her short story collections, uh, based on having read this one because it is it is pretty interesting. So without further ado, let's talk about The Fairy Handbag. I will do a brief summary, a little bit of an analysis, and we will move on from there. So The Fairy Handbag focuses on an unnamed narrator recalling their grandmother after her death and the mysterious handbag purse uh, that she had that the narrator calls The Fairy Handbag. Uh, for because um, that's at least what her grandmother called it. Uh, she's uh, frequently going to the garment factory, which is a uh, a clothing store that has vintage and um, old clothing, and she's hoping to find her mother's handbag, which has gone missing uh, recently. Uh, again, her grandmother is dead. Uh, she's gone to her funeral. But um, she's more focused on finding that handbag than she is on, on mourning her grandmother. The narrator recalls some of the events that w went on while her grandmother was alive. Uh, she noted, notes that her grandmother has always said that she, she comes from Baldiza Warla Kistan, which um, I don't know exactly what that is. It, there, I think it's a fictional place that Kelly Link made up. Uh, but even in the story, the, the people say that that place does not exist. And her grandmother says that uh, she's actually centuries old, uh, that um, Bar Baldiza Warlakistan used to exist in either Eastern Europe or Western Asia, and uh, uh, a terrible event happened that that caused everyone to go into hiding in the city, and in, in so doing, uh, doing it in a way that allowed them to live forever. Uh, so she talks about like having lived in this old village and living right next to the people under the hill, a fairy type people who would frequently marry into um, different families in the in in this uh, in this village. Uh, the the but it was generally advised against because these people did not get along very well. Like the fairy women didn't, um, or the people under the the hill. The, those women didn't particularly like being, um, you know, getting into fights with their husbands, uh, and they didn't like to have their their food, um, their cooking, uh, called bad in any sort of way. And uh, the as for the men of the people under the hill, it was generally advised like no matter how cute the guy might be, do not. Uh, like go into his bed because that's not going to end well. Unfortunately, the village in Baldiza, Warlakistan, uh, that village is destroyed by marauders of some type. 
Uh, but luckily, the people are able to, uh, with the help of a shaman, build a, 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 a magical purse uh, w that allows people to uh, hide within it in, in, a in a way similar to Narnia. Uh, the, but the handbag is also guarded by uh, a skinless dog, as the purse is made out of dog skin. And the handbag... Um, if you open it a certain way, you can you can you can hide in it. But if you open it the wrong way, the dog might attack you. Uh, the grandmother actually hides in this handbag and comes out centuries later, where she is um, where she sees all this new technology, including movies, and she decides to stay there. She marries a Russian man, although the relationship doesn't really work out, and because the the Russian man sees that other people are coming out of the house frequently and thinks that his mom or that. The grandma is either a spy or a um, or cheating on him. And one day, the the Russian man just decides to jump into the handbag, and he disappears. Which um, the both the grandmother and the the mom decide, uh, you know, must mean that he's abandoned the family forever. But, you know, decades later, he comes out and start, visits the family before again returning to the handbag. The narrator also talks about their relationship with a young boy named Jake in this story, um, who she really loves and enjoys being around. And Jake seems to enjoy being around the grandma and and her. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, after, a, after a disturbance at school, Jake is uh, Jake finds that he no longer has an invitation to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology that he wanted to go to at their at their high school. And so after learning about the fairy handbag, he too tries to get in it. Uh, and he, he goes missing, um, which some people attribute to maybe a failed magic sort of uh, thing that he was doing, or he just ran away because things weren't going well for him. The narrator and her grandmother are trying to figure out what to do about Jake, since it seems like he hopped into the purse. Uh, and I think the grandmother is, is trying to tell her granddaughter, the narrator, that to just forget about Jake because he's only trouble and you're not going to see him for years. And if you jump into the purse too, nobody's going to see you for years uh, and you're not going to be able to relate to anyone. And while she's at the library, the grandmother puts a, a book in her purse, which the librarian doesn't like because she's banned from having books. And during a confrontation, the grandmother dies. Uh, although the narrator notes that the grandmother might have uh, put part of herself in the purse to deal with the, the barking dog, which everyone in the library seems to hear for some mysterious reason. Uh, and at that point, the purse goes missing, and the narrator notes that they are uh, they're, they're trying to find the purse. They're putting up um, posters all over town and, and, and going to the garment factory in, in hopes of finding this, this missing purse. And as the story ends, the narrator notes that you should absolutely not believe this story, echoing what the grandmother told uh, both the mom and uh, the narrator when, um, when she was telling stories, which the mom ultimately chose not to believe. In terms of analysis, this story is very unusual but I think there are a couple things that Kelly Link is trying to talk about. One of them is the spreading of, of European or Western Asian folklore uh, maybe somewhere around the Uzbekistan area but uh, I think it's uh, Kelly Link is talking about uh, the myths that people have and the folklore that people have about fairies and magic. Uh, fairy circles and the people under the hill um, or the invisible people as as Iceland likes to call them uh, which are so enveloped in the in the Icelandic folklore of the time so much so that the government interacts or like does things specifically not to upset the invisible people but you see a lot of, of fairy fa uh, fairy magic and just magic in general in this story uh, talking about uh, guardian dogs and and purses with uh, with sort of um, uh, like an infinite 
sort of purse where uh, people can hide and and be safe from the horrors of the outside world. Uh, so so I, I, I sort of explaining like Poland, um, like Polish folklore of, of trying to understand the supernatural and the world that isn't hasn't quite been explained by science yet. And this is passed down through generations. The grandmother is telling the mom and the grandmother is also telling the granddaughter and she's trying to share a bit of her culture and pass it down to her child, which judging by the end of the story, it sounds like uh, that's what's happening, that the daughter is uh, absorbing the, the, this culture and folklore and uh, using it to build her, her understanding of her own worldview and some of the things that she can't explain. Because even though this might be happening in the 21st century, there are still some, you know, sad, unfortunate things that she she can't really rationalize right now. And so she's using this folklore, this 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 magic and stuff to really explain the, the unexplainable. Um, and yeah, it's, it's used to explain hardships, as I as I just mentioned. So uh, the mystery. Your husband goes missing. Well, that must mean that he's in the in the in the handbag. That is that is magical. Jake goes missing. Well, he must have hopped into the handbag too. Um, how do you deal with invaders uh, and marauders? You, that you uh, get a shaman to create a handbag which allows your people to hide. They might have actually hid in the forest, but it's much easier to say that you hid in a handbag, um, adding a magical element to the the kind of horrors of the world. So I do like how Kelly Link really builds on stuff that might have already existed in folklore and in West Asia and in Eastern Europe. Uh, throughout throughout history. I think she might have done her research. Um, I don't know any specific myths that she might be referring to, but um, I have heard of these ideas in fairy tales before. Another thing that Kelly Link might be, is definitely probably talking about here, is coming to terms with death and loss. How we attempt to, under, uh, to understand uh, th those things that pain us the most. Um, I, I had mentioned that, uh, you know, the folklore was one way of, of talking about hardship, of, of explaining the, the terrible stuff of what's going on in the world. And, I, and again, yeah, that's exactly what Kelly Link is doing here. Uh, the death of, of her grandmother is hard for the narrator. She appeared to be very close with her. She hung out with her friends with her grandmother. They saw movies together. They played Scrabble together. She was a big part of her life. And it's, it seems to be really difficult for the narrator to cope with this pain of losing someone who was so close to her. Allow me to read you a quote from this. But I went up to Zofia's coffin, and I looked her right in the eyes. They were closed. The funeral parlor had made her up with blue eyeshadow and blue eyeliner. She looked like she was going to be a news anchor on Fox Television instead of dead. It was creepy, and it made me even sadder than I already was, but I didn't let that distract me. And so what I get from that quote is she's seeing her grandmother dead, and I think she refuses to accept it. She uh, she doesn't quite know how to deal with that loss, with that with that pain. Um, she said, "I didn't let that distract me." So she she might be in denial of of, of sorts, uh, similar to how um, her grandmother was in denial about the about her missing husband, uh, her being abandoned by her husband. So maybe th this way of adapting to to pain is is brought down. So you could talk about generational trauma a little bit, or even uh, talk about uh, how the way we cope with things is taught to us by others. So the narrator learned some pretty terrible ways to cope with, with sad, sadness and grief. Uh, the grandmother, rather than acknowledge that her husband had maybe run away, just said, oh, he was hiding in the handbag. And although the narrator says that she saw her husband or uh, her grandfather, I think uh, it's it, it's fair to say that maybe he just disappears every so often and returns like a like a like a deadbeat uh, a deadbeat father deadbeat grandfather uh, who is who is happy with pursuing a part time relationship even though he should be acting as a as a full time father to the mother in this story so uh, the grandmother really lied you could argue about. How, the circumstances of her husband's disappearance because to accept the truth that he ran away and just say oh he hopped into the handbag that's 
That's a different way of coping with that. And you could also say that that's what the narrator does when her when her sort of boyfriend, Jake, runs away. Because things didn't seem to be going well for him. So he disappeared into the handbag. But did he just run away? Because uh, he couldn't cope with uh, how life was in his town anymore? Did he kill himself? Um, and this is how the narrator copes with that grief by, by lying to herself? Um, or did he simply just go off to college and the narrator didn't want to accept that? I don't know. But I think there are multiple explanations here, multiple layers to the story where you have the story that the grandmother is telling and the, that the narrator is telling. Um, uh, and then you have, you know, what actually might be really happening uh, that we're, 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 we're getting a bit of an uh, unreliable narrator here. Uh, and I think it's also interesting because at the end of the story, the narrator uh, tries to play Scrabble and divine with the Scrabble pieces. But the, the pieces say nothing ultimately to her. But she but she uh, switches her thinking to uh, Baldiza Worla Kistan, uh, the, the writing in the language there, and she begins to see stuff. But there's nothing actually there because if you didn't see it originally in English, why would you just suddenly see it in, a, in another language? Um, and she thinks that she's going to be able to find the fairy handbag. But it's possible that was just that, 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 that it never really existed or that it was uh, missing um, or like, like she had imagined it in the first place. And so those are my thoughts on The Fairy Handbag by Kelly Link. I thought it was a fine story. It really goes nowhere. Uh, like there's uh, a story there, but it feels like it's just meandering and, and, and going in no direction. Uh, as I was reading it, I was like, I don't really have a lot to say about this beyond the ideas of death and loss and how we explain that. And it doesn't really seem like the narr like Kelly Link was willing to make a full commitment to telling a, a complete story because the narrator is 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 telling us what happened but but nothing really happens throughout the entire story so I just thought it was um, what probably one of the more blander uh, short stories that I've read for Short Story Tuesday if you have something to say about this review or you simply want to comment you know on something that I did say if you read this before do so below let's talk about the fairy handbag otherwise don't forget to like share and subscribe so that more people can find out about Kelly Link if they don't already know her and about the fairy handbag because this might appeal to some other people even though it didn't appeal to me and until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and fairy travels. Farewell.